Hey, everybody. Thank you for joining today's Material Security Product Showcase. Uh, I'm Ivan Dwyer, Head of Product Marketing for Material, and I am joined today by John Hervatten, our VP of Product and Design. We have an excellent agenda for you today, focused on demonstrating new and enhanced capabilities in our fishing protection product. We're going to walk through some of our perspectives on the security landscape and then jump right into a live demo. Now, there will be time for questions at the end, so feel free to ask in the Zoom, chat, or Q&A, and we'll come back to it. Now, something I've found myself saying a lot recently is that email attacks are on the rise, which is an evergreen statement. So as these attacks just get more frequent and more sophisticated, we know it's a lot on security teams. So we are just here to help you make sense of it all. Okay, before we jump in, uh, just a brief introduction to material security for those of you who may not be familiar with us. Uh, we secure the cloud office, whether that's Microsoft 365 or Google Workspace or some combination of both. Now, these platforms, they are home to all of the people, all of your content, and all of your communications. And they are constantly under attack from increasingly sophisticated actors. So our aim really is to reduce risk in otherwise hard to address, but very critical areas of the cloud office. And we offer a security suite that covers intelligent defenses, real-time insights, and right-sized controls precisely where you need them the most. And we have a lot of great customers across a range of heavily regulated and highly competitive industries. And uh, thankfully, they all have nice things to say about us, which we, which we really appreciate. Okay, let's just level set very quickly on an important truth. Your productivity suite isn't just another application, it is critical infrastructure. Now, let's think about that for a second. What exists across every mailbox in your organization? Well, it's pretty much every confidential interaction and transaction over time. It's a treasure trove of regulated information of assets. But also, these accounts themselves can be leveraged to exfiltrate large volumes of sensitive data, and they can also be used as a vector to gain elevated access to systems and applications. Now, this could be malicious or it could be accidental. Now, we treat all of our cloud workloads across AWS, GCP, and Azure as critical. I think we should do the same for the workspace. Again, it's because it's all of your people, all of your content, and all of your communications. And when you think about the risk of all that, now this is where things get extra challenging for security teams. So I call this the cloud risk gap. Effectively, as your footprint continues to grow, the complexity and depth of the environment typically outpaces the visibility and controls in place to support it. Now, risk reduction is always top of mind, but why is this so important right now to address this growing gap? Well, what we're seeing on a daily basis, again, is just increase in email-based attacks, both in volume and in sophistication. And just the burden on teams to handle these issues is compounding. And it's harder than ever to decipher what's real and what's noise. Also, as these systems and the teams grow, the vulnerabilities just get harder to spot. And again, all it takes is one misconfigured knob. We know that. Now, within the cloud office, there's, of course, system configurations to watch out for, but there's also the human element. So just keeping up with user posture, that's an ongoing effort. And the consequences are greater. It's not just financial impact, but reputational damage, operational outages, and now we're seeing in the news a lot, even legal repercussions. They're making headlines every week. Now, sorry, I don't mean this to be the doomsday slide. We all know about risk, and we're all just doing our best to reduce risk. So let's talk about how Material looks at cloud office risk uh, from an architectural perspective first. So in the early days of the cloud, you know, the thing to do would be to surround these systems with an email gateway and a data gateway, and you know, inspecting what's coming in and inspecting what's going out, just trying to stop bad things from happening. But as we all know, perimeter defenses only get you so far, and just the architecture generally is not well suited for the dynamic nature of the cloud. So we know zero trust is the way. We've been taught this over the last few years. So of course, uh, now a more effective way would be to build API-enabled solutions that can connect directly with these providers to provide added layers of visibility and controls at the platform level. But of course, it's not always that simple. It never is. You know, these platforms are big. These platforms are messy. So even just being connected at the API level has its downsides. One, speed is challenging because you're constantly traversing these rate-limited APIs. Correlation is challenging because you're often missing context and history. So as a security company that takes security very seriously, when we, we deploy each customer into their own isolated single tenant cloud environment, as part of that deployment architecture, we're building out a dedicated data warehouse of all of your customer data inside the cloud office. Along the way, we're adding transformations and enrichments to what is typically very messy and raw, unstructured Microsoft and Google you know, data and events 
to form this structured model of, again, people, content, and communications over time. Now, with that data warehouse, we can extend that data warehouse to build out our data platform and all of our products. We also offer up the, the platform uh, as its own search and discovery interface for you to work directly with. Now, this architecture matters because it enables us to do things that would be very difficult to do at the API level and impossible to do as a gateway. So if we are actually going to help you close this risk gap, this is the data architecture to make that happen. But what does that bring you as a customer of material? Well, it's a more overall a more holistic approach to risk reduction that acts as a force multiplier across a few key areas. So just keeping up with the threat landscape, of course, requires intelligent defenses. Now, intelligence isn't just an AI label slapped on for the sake of it. It's real defense in depth that services real issues with very clear case handling. This is what we're going to see in action during the demo. And again, much of that platform risk lies in the large service area to cover. Again, this is across user and system configurations. Now, there's obvious posture settings like MFA adoption, but there's also less obvious settings like mail forwarding rules. So our data platform really enables us to cover the entire workspace and to help pinpoint some of those much harder to find vulnerabilities. And at the end of the day, the, the consequences from all these incidents always come back to the data. Now, we believe we take a, you know, we take a unique approach to protecting sensitive data. Uh, what we do is we redact the sensitive contents in the email messages themselves, and then we apply step-up authentication for retrieval. Now, as opposed to traditional DLP methods that are only scanning outbound contents and hoping for the best, we really actually apply access controls to the messages themselves. And we strongly believe that this method is much better for protecting sensitive data at rest while still enabling the workforce to access what they need on demand. This is where least privilege access really is right size access controls. So when you put all this together, you have the Material Cloud Office Security Suite. Now let's talk about email attacks specifically. That's the crux of this uh, conversation. So we're gonna walk through uh, our phishing protection uh, product. But first I wanna talk a little bit about what we're seeing in the market uh, because as markets do, the email security market is evolving and as cloud markets do, fast and furious. Uh, so there's just a few relevant points that we're, we're seeing out there. So first of all, Microsoft and Google, their built-in detections are, are really improving to the point where you don't need much of, you know, have, there's not much of a need for a SEG, you know, secure email gateway as that first line of defense anymore. Actually having a SEG atop Microsoft and Google, it's not just an unnecessary effort. It can actually be conflicting. You know, that's going to lead to a very poor user experience and just painful maintenance when you don't need to. So we're seeing a lot of customers ripping out their SEG and just relying on the native built-in tools for spam, malware, and basic phishing protection. But there's still very much a need for added layers of defense for these more sophisticated attacks, but also for managing the incidents response workflows from end to end. So that's where API-enabled solutions, they're, they're the right complement to these platforms because they can really help close coverage gaps, surface helpful insights, and apply the added controls. And then the last point was this one that's very close to home. I like to joke that data at rest isn't resting. Uh, so as I mentioned up front, you know, the cloud office is just a treasure trove of sensitive and regulated data. So the risk profile of the contents of everyone's mailbox should be as important a consideration as the transport. It's a massive data store with historically lax controls. So what we're seeing, we're seeing a lot more interest in data protection as part, as part of an email security platform, rather than thinking about them as separate disparate solutions. Okay, so what's new with material phishing protection? Finally, you say, uh, there is really three key areas that we wanna to showcase today. So first, we've expanded our threat detections across a number of methods, uh, from custom built-in detections that uncovered by our threat research team to more advanced ML models that are catching some of the more sophisticated flavors of attacks. And of course, you don't need to tell anyone that works in security operations that these attacks are on the rise, they're living it every day. So we know that every second counts. So we've taken just great care to further improve our case triage experience, really ensuring that you can effectively prioritize and remediate issues with all the context you need to act super fast. And we've added a series of insight reports that surface metrics and trends over time that help make the case, no pun intended, that your security operations are effectively addressing risk where you need it most. Now I'm going to pass it over to John, uh, who's going to walk through a demo. Uh, as he takes the reins, I just want to highlight that there really is no one-size-fits-all for threat detection. It really does take this multifaceted approach like you're about to see. So with that, John, let me pass the screen share over to you. Take it away, my friend. Thanks, Ivan. Thanks, everyone, for being here. Welcome. Uh, I'm excited uh, to share some of the updates that we've 
uh, we've made recently and just talk about materials, materials fishing protection. Uh, you know, unfortunately, uh, we're all extremely familiar with phishing attacks, personal life, work life, they're, they're just kind of everywhere. Uh, and part of the reason for that is because anytime we start to improve our defenses and do something more clever, then the attackers come up with another way, they come with some other, other way of being, also being clever. Um, and sometimes they even use their own tools against us, which, you know, in AI and LLMs, are, are, that's certainly a case. And I'll, I'll show you a little bit, little bit of that today. Um, but that's why it's really important that we have this kind of multi-pronged, multi-faceted multi approach to detection. And so that's what I'm going to walk you through here, starting with, with our built-in detection. So what I'll, what I'll do to start this demo, we have a little demo script that sends a few phishing messages. Um, and what it does uh, is it uses an LLM to generate a phishing email. And so I can just choose whatever the, the type of attack, whatever the content is. So here I'll make this, you know, CEO asking for, make this urgent help paying an invoice. All right. So that just kicked off, kicked off a script. It's going to an LM saying, hey, please generate a phishing message uh, pretending to be the CEO who needs urgent help paying an invoice um, and give me some of these um, some of these other characteristics about it. Um, so what I'll what I'll see here if I come into my my mailbox, this is my uh, my Gmail account. Um, here it is from Diane at almost my company. This is a uh, an L instead of an I. You see, they even spoofed did a nice job. The L did a nice job spoofing the from address. Um, it's saying here's a payment request, um, asking me to. Um, uh, ask me to pay this invoice. And so here's here's a malicious message um, that definitely um, uh, is something that an attacker could easily easily bring about. Um, and so uh, what what material is doing here is uh, you know we're constantly scanning the scanning the inbox, looking through these incoming messages um, for places where um, where we're seeing these messages um, come up. And we're also using, AI and LLMs to help detect these. Uh, and so um, uh, in this case, uh, I'll come back to this uh, to this message. I think this is the one that was just, just sent here. There we go. Let's see. Yep. All right. And so the attachment here is uh, is is blocked. Material identified this one as um, as sensitive. And so we'll use um, we'll use similar LLM tools to what what the attackers are using to try and um, to detect these these messages, and we'll build them into cases. Um, now a lot of these cases, um, you'll see like this one detected by Material AI. There there are other ones where uh, we're detecting things not just through AI, but through our threat research team. So in the summer of 2022, there was a, a Quackbot malware campaign, uh, you know, hit you know over a million machines. Um, our threat research team saw a hit from the that on on a customer uh, on a customer instance. Within a few hours, we had a protection, uh, new detection deployed um, out to all customers. Um, and you can see here's one that that came through that was that was detected um, based on this threat actor, and so. Um, when I open up the case, I can see it was detected by by material. Um, our analysis for this is saying, hey, this is this matches our our signature for for Quackbot. Um, and if I go back to the the inbox, um, I'll notice that this message isn't here because um, in this case, what we've done is we've we've moved this one. Um, sorry, um, we've moved this one over to. Um, to the spam folder. And so what Material will do when it finds these messages is apply remediation uh, automatically. And we have a lot of options for that remediation. This is you know, getting back to what Ivan was saying about, um, you know, that first line of defense uh, can be great and is getting better from the built-in uh, from your native detections. But a lot of times it's the workflow after that, it's the remediation options um, where they don't have as, as, many, as many tools. And so something Material does is besides just blocking the links and attachments or adding banners, we can mark these as moving to spam. 
So we have a various, various set of, uh, of remediations that we can apply to any one of these. And in this case, um, you know, we knew this one was like well-known bad. And so we added a banner to this, we moved it to the spam folder. Um, and then when you click a link, we'll just have this link totally blocked um, by, by material. Um, so this is, is totally, totally put off to the side. So we talked about, you know, using our MLAI detections to detect these messages. Uh, we talked about having threat research team, um, you know, constantly looking for issues for new attacks, new types of attacks, deploying rules. Um, now, even with all these defenses, something will get through. There are still ones like this is again, like I said, like that we come up with a new way to defend, the attackers come up with a new way to attack. This is unfortunately an ongoing arms race. Uh, and so some things will get through. And in that case, usually we, we you know, train our users, we train our employees uh, to be able to, to spot these and identify and report them. So what I've got here um, is this, um, this email that is, is also a phishing message, but that isn't caught um, and that typically wouldn't be caught. Um, you'll see it's, you know, it has encrypted, um, has like high, high um, reputation links. So it's a YouTube link, um, it's a Google form. This is, you know, Mac malware and that's encrypted, frequently gets past attachment scanners. Uh, so there are lots of things in here that make this a very clever attack. Uh, and so in this case, I'm depending on um, my users to report this. The material will ingest these reports in any number of ways. So you can have it forward to an abuse mailbox, you can use a button in the UI, you can use the native reporting via Google or Microsoft. Um, for this demo, I, I like to just use the suspicious label that we add, it's just kind of easy to do. So I'm gonna mark this as suspicious um, and apply this. And so this is me telling the security team, hey, I think there's something wrong. Now, for all of you who deal with these reports all the time, typically you know that, okay, now what happens? Well, I have to go get that report, I have to find it, I have to go investigate it, um, I have to go look for other things that are, um, that are happening, um, look for maybe other messages that, that came out. Um, let me make sure I've got the right material menace. Okay, so what material does when it gets this, this report um, is it analyzes the message, and it also starts searching your entire organization for similar ones. Um, and so in this case, um, you know, you'll see this, this other one that we talked about. We knew this one was bad. We marked it malicious. And so we just blocked it, just outright said this is bad. For this one, we said, okay, well, this user reported this. I don't know if this is bad yet. It could be a false positive. And so what Material does right away is it applies a speed bump. Um, and I'm going to switch windows here real fast. Um, to show you what that looks like um, in a different user. So um, this, this user, this is another one in my company, got the same attack, but it's not a Star Wars email. It's a different content, but it uses the same link. Um, and so when I click this link in this email, I'm warned, hey, my colleague reported a similar message as suspicious. Now, if I know that this is safe, if I was expecting this message, maybe my colleague reported a false positive, I can click click through. I don't need to go bug the security team to go unquarantine a message or to undo something. Um, but it, this is frequently just that little hiccup you need, the little speed bump in the road you need to like warn someone, hey, be careful, like maybe take a second before you before you click this link. So now I'm going to let me come back to uh, to material. So now I'm going to go through it and and triage this. So I'm going to look through this and realize, oh wow, this this OneDrive link um, that I see in here is bad. The other thing I can do um, uh, with it with this new kind of case triage or case UX is I can you know grab these uh, these forms and these uh, these links or here I'll do the attachment and I can search virus total and see if virus total has has information on the um, uh, on this particular attachment. Um, we also will help you ex examine the headers. So let's say I'm looking at these authentication results. You know, Material has already determined that this is a pass, but you know, maybe I'm just curious about this, or maybe I'm trying to figure out what exactly this one means. Um, we recently added the explain button, and so you click explain, 
and material AI goes off and will tell you what exactly this header does, what's it for, and then even whether or not, like what this particular instance of the header means. So it doesn't just explain an authentication results header, it examines the header result, this particular header for this message and helps you interpret it. Um, so, uh, you know, we're going to show you, here's the message that was reported. Here's everything material knows about it. We're going to help you examine the headers, help you examine the links, the attachments, and then also find similar messages. So this is that similar message that I clicked on in the other mailbox. Um, it's not a Star Wars message, but it has the same malicious link. And so we noticed that that commonality across the two of them. And so we pulled them into the same case and made it easy for you um, to make one triage decision across both of them. Um, now, another piece that, that we've added recently is this um, uh, material AI suggestion. So we're using an LLM to help you triage these user reports. Um, and it is a suggestion. You know, in this case, it's looking and saying, hey, I know who, you know, this is a known entity. Um, it's an invitation. They don't see this suspicious call to action because it's filling out a Google form. Um, and so the, this really is an example of a place where, um, where, you know, your user, like these messages will get through. These like well-crafted attacks um, find their way through. Now, I'm in here, I'm looking at this. Yep, this is malicious. I'm gonna click malicious. You can see now the remediation switches to block. Um, and I have a report response on and I hit save. And so by making this change, material is going to all the cases, all the messages in this case, in this case, in this case there were two, um, and, and updating um, all the links there. So now if I come back to this suspicious message that I had reported, um, now I click, if I click the link, um, it's just totally blocked. Um, so there's no way to click through. Um, and, you know, I've just completely mitigated this, um, this threat. All right. Um, so talked about built-in detections using material AI, using LMs. We talked about threat research team. We talked about user reports. Um, the next piece here is reporting. Uh, so, you know, I've been mentioning this as a, as a new, um, as an updated part of the product. Uh, and so uh, let me walk you through these. Uh, we, we start this with, with a quick summary across case trends, detections, use reports, and simulations, trying to give you that kind of high level view. And this, you know, this could just be like useful for you to look at your own trends. Perhaps you're doing reports weekly, monthly for, for a CISO, for someone else, for a board. Um, this is intended to be something that you can do, you know, like um, quickly capture and, and use in slides and reports um, or reports for other folks. So here I can see a trend of cases created, also see how many accounts were affected. A lot of times, you know, a single case, a single phishing message is sent to a lot of people. Um, I can dig into the detections, like of all the cases that were created, what were created by, by material, what's the um, uh, the precision, like how accurate were these cases? And I'll, I'll dig into this one as, as the full report. Um, so here I can go through and say, which of the cases were remediated? In this case, you know, thankfully all of them were. Um, uh, how long did it take for material to remediate these, both across the R detections as well as custom detections, which I'll get to uh, in a moment. Uh, and then being able to say how, how effective were they? Um, and then the, the other place I'll dig into here is just back on, on case trends, you know, interesting things like what domains are these phishing messages come from? How are you being attacked? Are they attachments? Are they links? Is there no payload? Are these social engineering attacks where they're just trying to get someone in your organization to respond? Maybe that's where you should focus training efforts. Um, and then the analysis, like what do we see most in these attacks? Obviously, this is our demo instance. We do a lot of demos on it. So pretty consistent what things we're seeing in our in this environment um and then just a lot uh, you know further deep dive into a lot of statistics that uh, that we put here based on conversations with customers and and understanding what they would like to see and what's useful to them about um uh, about understanding the phishing cases that that their organization is is facing um and then this last piece i think is is an important one is how do they interact with it you know did you did these users click a blocked link that you're glad it was blocked? 
um, or attachment? Did they bypass the speed bump link? Like, is that speed bump not doing what we want it to do? Um, you know, maybe they're doing this on purpose and then maybe it's a good thing because it was a false positive. Uh, and so this is where you want to be able to dig in and do a little bit more research here. Um, all right. The, the last thing I'll get to really on kind of types of detections is, is, um, is threat hunting and, and search. Uh, now, this is a, a common thing. You see a message, you hear about something, you want to take action on it. You want to wait for, for material to update a model. You don't even want to wait for us to like deploy a rule. You want to be able to take action on it right away. Uh, and we have a built-in message search that uh, I think typically for a lot of customers ends up being one of the things they love the most because it is just kind of night and day with the search tools and the speed of search that they have available to them in the native platforms. And so here I'll go back, um, you know, there was a there was this, this phishing campaign called Octopus a while ago. And you know, maybe I saw this on um, uh, online somewhere in some community, someone pointed this out. And so you know, we say, okay, I'm looking for something that's from this like dash octa domain. Uh, and well, good, nothing was found. Like I don't have any active threats here, but now what do I do? Like, do I just keep refreshing this every day, uh, every hour? Um, this is where our custom detections come in. As easily as you can build a search in material, you can build a custom detection. So I run this search, I see what results I'm getting, and I click new suspicious category. Now I can give it a name. give it a description, and I can choose exactly what cust what remediation I want. If I'm certain that anything that matches this criteria is bad, you know, I'm going to make sure that this is blocked. If this is one where I'm just a little bit uncertain, maybe I'll catch a false positive in there. Maybe I want to just apply the speed bump. Again, these remediation options are really powerful tools that, that help you adjust adjust your, your defenses. <clears throat> um, and so this is that, that I that kind of last last prong of, of our detection are these, these custom ones. Um, now, the, the last piece, if you remember the IBIDS chart goes from you know, detection, remediation, extensibility is user training. Uh, Material has a phishing simulation uh, product built in. And as we, we built this, because you know, we talked to customers about their phishing cases and they would ask us, hey, do you do phishing simulation? We're like, well, look, what do you find useful about it? What are you looking for? Like what's missing? Like, we didn't want to just build a phishing simulation just to have it. And what we learned was that crafting the right content was really, really hard. It at least time consuming. And we thought, well, we have all these attackers creating these sometimes very clever phishing campaigns. Why not have them do a little work for us instead of against us for once? And so what we we did was let you create a new simulation from an existing case. And so now I can go exactly to that message that I thought was super clever and got through defenses. And I can say, yep, that's the one I want. Material goes through, finds all the links and attachments, defangs the message, replaces them with, with fake ones that then we can track, and then gives you a full customization tool to say, okay, now you can still customize this message, uh, customize who gets it, when they get it, how they report it, all the kind of standard stuff for a phishing simulation tool, uh, but you get that huge jumpstart in, uh, in, in the content that's there. Um, so that's the, the last bit, bit of my, my demo for today. Um, and I'll, I'll pass it back off. That was great. great. That was great. This is a good time to pop in any questions that you may have. Uh, so use the Q and A in the chat. Uh, I will ask, I'll ask one question if you don't mind, uh, John. So it's going to be an AI question, of course, of course. Of course. Uh, so I love that explained feature. Uh, would you mind just kind of talking a little bit about our LLM, LLM architecture behind the scenes? Yeah. Uh, how are we communicating with which LLMs and how is customer data being protected in that scenario? <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's, a, that's an, a, a great question. I think very, very topical. I think it's something that security teams deal with a ton is how they leverage these great tools, these, this new technology while keeping their data safe. Um, we take an approach where we keep all of your customer data um, on your private Google Cloud instance. Your data never leaves that Google Cloud instance, whether it's using an LLM or not. It's also never used to train any of these LLMs. And we do that by leveraging the Google Gen AI. It's built on uh, generative AI, Vertex AI, um, 
I'm blanking on the exact name of the model that we use. I think it's Chat Bison is the name of the model. Um, but what Google has, has has offered there is the ability of you to within your Google Cloud project access um, an LLM. None of the data leaves the instance. None of the data is trained. Uh, is used for training by Google. Um, and this is really end up like keeping with our overall promise of you know we give every customer an isolated Google Cloud instance, and that's just how we deploy. So customer data is not intermingled with other customers, uh, and uh, you get your own isolated isolated place. And and we don't um, none of that changes with the use of LLMs. Yeah, good, good, good to hear. All right, we got a question here. Uh, I was wondering if you could speak more about the data models used to inform the remediation options for material. This is from Leo. Thank you, Leo. Good question. Um, yeah, so in a lot of ways, I, I think what what um what you're getting at in the um uh in this question is is like how do we even choose which remediation options that we apply to a particular message? Some of them are your data models maybe is a little little uh fancy. <laughs> for what we do. In some places, you think, well, I better add a banner to this thing or move it to spam if it doesn't have a link or an attachment. You know, So like if this attack it has, is payloadless, well, then blocking links or attachments is not going to help me. So I'm going to do that. Um, there's also a level of, of confidence scoring. Some of this is based off of the, the detection that we're writing. Some of this is based off of what we're getting back from, from some of the, the ML features on the confidence scoring on whether or not we'll apply something as a speed bump. Um, or or just block it outright, uh, and and then there are some configuration options there that customers can can tweak um, to adjust like how how the responses happen in their environment. For example, you know if you wanted everything to always be moved to spam, that's an option that that a customer could could choose. Cool. Good answer. You can give yourself a little more credit than that. Every data model is just a bunch of if else statements, anyway. So. <laughs> All right. Good stuff. Cool. Uh, well, thank you for running through that demo. We can just, uh, we'll just pop back and just do a little quick little recap uh, where we're, we're at. One more thing. Uh, one thing I just wanted to highlight from that, you know, from that demo, I mean, you, you know, you w went through that message search and I think that's just like a really important thing to highlight from that data architecture that I mentioned up front, right? If anyone's ever tried to do that type of search, uh, you know, across, you know, one tenant or even try multiple tenants. I mean, you know, using the built-in tools, it's, it's really hard and it's really slow and it's really painful. And I think the work that we've done to bring some structure, uh, to these messy environments, uh, put it in that data warehouse and then expose that search interface as, as, as that toolkit that we have, uh, it just can't be overstated, like how critically important that is for, you know, real-time threat detection and, you know, doing real, you know, deep forensics investigations. There's so many use cases, uh, that, that kind of unlocks out of the, out of the gate. Uh, so the fact that we went through, did all that work, I think is, is really important. Just wanted to highlight that. Cool. So the three things that we really wanted to, to, to for you to take away, uh, from what's new today, um, uh, you know, for phishing protection specifically, you know, the detections, right? So, uh, this, the work that we're doing to to keep up with the threat landscape, uh, you know, keep building out these models, but also to support various sources uh, and to be able to do that in a cohesive way uh, and making sure that what we surface uh, is the things that you need to be focusing your attention on, right? So less false positives, more actionable contexts, and just make those faster, faster remediation paths. Uh, that's like the holy grail of, of all this. If we can, if we can really tighten that up, uh, you know, that's going to make everybody in security operations happy. The you know triage experience, right? So we want to have that single view uh, for for response, right? Like, like we said, you know, it doesn't end at the detections. It's not just a checkpoint. Like, how do we actually handle these cases from end to end? Uh, so you know, really simplifying that view, having a really simple list, you know, that's you know help helps it helps you as an analyst prioritize. Like, all right, this is something I need to look at today. You know, we do a lot of work to group things, so you know you're not you know swatting flies uh, the same fly over and over and over again. It's like, hey, we've done a lot of work to to con consolidate uh, the, these into cases the way that they make sense. And then once you're in a case, all that context, you know, being able to to do those explainers, you know, when you when you need additional context, to be able to look at things. Uh, and then all the remediation options, right? So some, you know, it could be a speed bump, it could be, you know, straight up blocking it. Everything's meant to be really flexible. 
that that experience, like just really making sure that we continue to improve that experience for, for everyone that's on the front line, that's like super top of mind for us. Uh, so a lot of great work has been done. John and team have done an amazing job talking with customers, making sure that the, like we're doing everything we can to make that experience as seamless as possible. And then of course, reports, right? Uh, who doesn't love charts? Uh, but really just getting into some of those metrics and trends, like, hey, because there are things that we can help like teams bring back to the business. Look, you know, we've been catching these, we're seeing some trends here, we're improving uh, over time, uh, being able to see some patterns, you know, looking at it from a domain perspective, looking at it from a, you know, threat perspective, like, hey, we're, we're, we're seeing these things more frequently. Let's make sure that we're, we're not losing sight of, of the whole picture. Uh, but surfacing that, making it kind of easier, uh, bringing that front and center. So detections, uh, triage UX, uh, advanced reports, this is all very much, uh, you know, stuff that we're going to continue to improve on. And again, finishing protection is, is one piece of the puzzle when it comes to cloud off security. We focus on it today because it was what, what's, what's new, um, but there's a lot more the material ha has to offer from a data protection standpoint. Uh, so actually thinking about the contents of, of the mailbox. Uh, you know, there's a lot of, you know, regulated information, a lot of sensitive information. We do uh, a lot of cool things, unique things to, you know, ap apply, uh, you know, apply controls to the actual, you know, data itself. Uh, you know, think about posture of, of the cloud office, right? So there's all the, you know, user settings, uh, system settings, you know, like we, we surface a bunch of risk analytics. Uh, and then, you know, identity management is, is an interesting use case for us is like, by looking at email, we can see some patterns around application usage, you know, what third party apps are people signing up for that they shouldn't be. Uh, people can use uh, password resets as a very common uh, kind of way to gain elevated access, right? So this is a, you know, something that we can kind of detect by looking at the emails. So all that kind of comes together um, as the material uh, cloud office security suite. And just to touch on that deployment model again, like very critical, uh, thinking about it from a data privacy and data security perspective. You know, we deploy every customer into a single tenant, uh, isolated environment, very easy to hook up via API, it takes minutes. Um, and then you can extend it with, with other security or operational tools. Uh, that's that experience is is a, a pretty seamless, but again, very uh, you know private, isolated uh, customer environments because we're dealing with your sensitive and regulated information. We want to make sure that you know uh, we're, we're taking great care of handling that. So if you want to see all this live in your environment, and if you're not if you're an existing customer, this may be familiar to you. You wanted to see the new stuff, but if you're just checking us out, uh, you know what's a great way to get started. Well, POC is very quick to get to get set up, right? So we connect by API in minutes. We just do a you know a admin delegation. We start pulling in you know a lot of your historical information. Uh, build out that data warehouse, you know, as part of that POC uh, experience. And we start to populate some of these risk analytics reports with what we're seeing, right? So this is just a, you know, a small sample of the types of things that we can, uh, we can pull like within, you know, within days of running a POC. So once that data platform is active, like, you know, uh, collecting all that information, there's just so much more that we, we can help uh, start to pinpoint some of those vulnerabilities, start to identify patterns, start to address risk from a data perspective, uh, so it starts with a starts with a POC. So that's where I want to I want to leave us to make sure uh, you know if you want to get in touch with us, just visit us at material.security. Uh, check out more about the product. You can uh, get in touch with us, and we can run a demo uh, and run, run a POC. And we'd love to get that let started. Let me see if there's any more questions. No more questions. I think John, you did such a good job of uh, demoing that there are no additional questions. Uh, so I think with that, we can give everybody 10 or so minutes back uh, on their day. Wanted to say thank you everybody for joining. Thank you, John. Uh, and make sure John, you thank your team for all of the fantastic work here, pushing this product forward. Uh, there's so much more that we've got coming. You know, We're gonna be excited. We're gonna do a lot more of these more frequently to keep showing you what we've been working on, keep showing new features, new capabilities, new parts of the product. Uh, so make sure you follow us on all of the channels uh, and stay in touch with us. But uh, yeah, thank you, everybody, and uh, enjoy the rest of your day.